you all. This is E-Man Booze. Boy, we just got done making some dynamite fish tacos, me and my wife. We had, uh, we made them like Ensenada style. You know, we had the corn tortillas and the fried up mahi-mahi and we had the cabbage on there and all the sauces and everything and it was delicious. And as soon as I got done that, then I had to go outside and clean snow off the car because this winter's been killing me. But in any event, that's all good. And tonight what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this spirit called Sage from a company called Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. Now that's a hell of a name if I ever heard a name for distillery, but they into a bunch of different artistic things aside from distilling, but they do focus on distilling. And what they do do, they make four different spirits. This is the fourth one in the series. They have one called Snap, and, and, and one called uh, Rhubarb Tea, and one called Root, okay? And this is the fourth one called Sage. And they got a neat little book that tells about all the products here and tells the history behind the inspiration of what they, uh, what they were inspired by to make the spirit. Now this particular spirit is inspired by uh, a recipe that Thomas Jefferson uh, used to make on his farm in Monticello. So uh, apparently back in the day, uh, Jefferson had befriended a fellow named McMahon. I think his first name was Bernard McMahon. And uh, this fellow was a horticulturalist, knew a lot about plants, and uh, he had uh, uh, made a book about all the different plants that Lewis and Clark had collected when they went out west. and, and uh, that was a, another neat thing. But Jefferson was really into it, and he, he made this kind of spirit. And it's kind of like a gin, but there ain't no juniper berry in it. So it really ain't a gin. Uh, let's just call it sage, because that's what they call it, and that's what we're going to call it. But it's kind of similar to a gin in a lot of ways. It uses different botanicals. Now, what are they? Let's read the laundry list here. We got uh, elderberry, pine, Black tea, rose, dry orange peel, cubeb, angelica, sage, lavender, spearmint, dandelion, thyme, sumac, I hope it ain't the poison kind of sumac, uh, rosemary, licorice root, and fennel. So they got all these botanicals in infused in, in this here uh, neutral grain spear. Let's pour a little bit in here, check it out, see what we think. Nice and clear, and we wouldn't expect anything else for uh, a spirit of this nature. Wow, the nose, the nose is really interesting. Ain't like a gin because you don't get the juniper. What you do get right off the bat is you get a herbaceousness, you get a bright citrus tone, you pick up the spearmint right away, you can smell the lavender, a little bit of the, uh, the, the, the rosemary, a, a touch of the sage, it's not real sagey on the nose, a little bit of the orange peel, I can find that in there, but it's got like 65 different flavors coming off the nose, so that's a cool thing right there. Heck, I don't even know if we need to drink it. We can just stand here and smell it for, for a couple more minutes. Mmm. The fennel note just really jumped out at me. And the cubeb with the pepper, that jumped out. It got it all in here. What's fascinating about it is every time you, you swirl it around and smell it, you're smelling something different. There go the rose. Wow, that, that's neat. I ain't smelled a spirit before that had so many different aromatics in it. Let's give it a taste. Mmm! It's a little warm, not too warm. It's only 80 proof. Nice and balanced on the heat. But what we were just talking about 
with all the different botanicals. You pick up all the herbally ones first, and then you get the citrus tones and the rose note. A little bit of pepper on the back note. Then the licorice comes in, or the anise root. Uh, both of them actually are in there. And so it's got a lot going on with it. And uh, I cheated a little bit because last night my wife and I, we made a drink with this just like a gin and tonic, but let's call it a sage and tonic. We put that in the glass with a, a pinch of lime and some ice cubes and some tonic water. And we just enjoyed the heck out of it. Uh, it's just so floral. All the notes that come out at you. Uh, this will be great on a hot day if we ever get one. As cold as it's been out here, so I can't wait to uh, drink one of these sage and tonics uh, on a on a warm day. Uh, but heck, it's good just by itself, just like this. Let's give it one more uh, go around here. Mmm, mouth feels good. The mint, definitely. All the different things we just talked about. It's about $33, $34 a bottle if you can find it. It's made in Philadelphia. And uh, well worth trying. I can't wait to get to the other three spirits. And you know I'm going to review them too. I'm E-Man Booze. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I write a monthly distillery of the month column for MainStreetDistilleries.com. So check me out there. Uh, appreciate everything, uh, the kind comments that folks have been giving me. And uh, y'all have a good evening. Bye, you all.